this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about asserting yourself as a software developer. Alright, so today I want to talk about one of my big pet peeves as a software developer. So as, a, as software developers, we can have many different roles and in many different times of our lives or whatever. So you could be a developer who's just doing your own stuff, you're working on your own projects, you're putting it up to the app store, you're, you're totally self-reliant, which is awesome, that's cool. Or you could be an employee or a contractor, and I kind of lump them together because you're working for one, for one organization and they're paying you based on your time, there's that. And then there's where you're doing client work where you've, you've given somebody, somebody's come to you for a project, you've given them a quote and you're working on that to deliver that project. A lot of what I'm talking about has to do with the last one. It has to do with scope creep and the amount of time that gets spent on it. Basically, time wasting. Because scope creep happens in every situation, but when it's your own Prod. If it's your own project, there's going to be scope creep because you have a new idea or you've got something or you, get, you just turn into a perfectionist and you just want to make sure everything is perfect and you never go live. And in that kind of situation, you have to like almost pretend that you've hired yourself, otherwise things will never get done. When somebody's hiring you for time, based on time and material as a contractor or, or as an employee, those kind of situations, scope creep still happens. It's annoying, it's always annoying, but it's still, it's not costing you any money. The third situation where you've given somebody a quote for a project is where you really have to assert yourself as a developer. It's very easy, this, cause my, big, my big pet peeve is to be sidelined as a developer, to be belittled, almost like a, I'll tell you what, Eric, just add that on there, will you? I just, you know what, add that on there, right? Because at that point, it's, you know, it's costing you money. Now, scope creep is easy because scope creep is like, okay, could you just add this feature? Could you just add this one? Could you just add this one little thing? Scope creep always happens. I've never had a project where there wasn't some scope creep. And I, I tend to be a bit of a pushover. Like a lot of times I'll be like, yeah, actually, yeah, we, yeah, we'll probably get that in there. Like it's because it's, you know, sometimes I think it would, it would genuinely improve the project, but it's got to be my choice, right? It's got to be my, you know, that's like, Okay, I'm gonna decide whether or not yes, yes or no to go with that. And sometimes you give an inch and they take a yard or whatever, or you get you'll say yes to a little feature, and then it opens up a floodgates of support issues going forward. All right, so you have to be really, um, really careful about that. But we all know about scope creep. The thing that really bothers me the most is just wasting time because a lot of the times, like you, you'll have in your contract saying, okay, we'll give you like a weekly update, give you a weekly update of how it's going, or we'll send you your know, regular bills or, or whatever your agreement happens to be with a client. But a lot of the times there's still other things that come in, like, uh, like a phone call, like just you're sitting there working, you're on maybe a completely different project, or maybe even on the client's project. You're just, you're in the scope, you're in the code, you're in the zone or whatever, the developers are in the zone, whatever. You're busy. And then the phone rings and it's like, Hey, can we just have a quick catch up on you know on where we are with this project? And I totally know I totally know they're like excited. It's like Christmas morning, like some big application is coming and they can't wait to see how it's going. But it's like it's a distraction, right? It is that kind of like a thing. So a lot of times you have to remember to program the numbers of the clients into the phone so that if you if you don't have time to talk to them at that moment, it's like you know like again it sounds bad when I say dodging calls, but sometimes you're like okay. I'll have to call them back later because I know this is a longer conversation. So that's one thing. Another thing, and this is something that I get a lot, is the, hey, can you just liaise with somebody? Hey, you know, so-and-so so in our marketing department says they didn't like this. Could you just give her a call and see what she means? Hey, can you just, uh, um, we have this other development company, so like this happens a lot, this happens a lot where I'm working on the, on the mobile app. So either I'm working on it or my developers are working on it. Somebody's working on the mobile app, but there's like another development company working on a back-end system or whatever. It could be an internal company with a client or it could be like another external company and the client will say, can you get in touch with like, so if we're having a bit of issues, you know, like, okay, we can't, their API doesn't support this, you know, be like, hey, can you just get, you know, call them up and find out, you know, get them to support it. Can you just get them to support that, that, um, that functionality? And it's like, no, it's not my job. And I've actually had this happen once where I had the client 
arrange a meeting. And it's like, meetings take time. Meetings take time, and it's, if it's not part of the scope, if it's not part of your quote, then it's, you know, it's, it, just, it just eats away at things. And sometimes it's necessary, so you have to think about that kind of stuff when you're quoting. Anyway, so we get in, so we have this meeting where it's just like this other company, my company, and the client, and right before the meeting, like 20 minutes before the meeting, the client says, oh, Eric, I'm really busy in other meetings at the moment. I tell you what, I'm not gonna understand what you guys are talking about anyway. It's gonna be all technical. Can you just, you know, handle this meeting for me? And my whole thing was, I, and I said, no, I said, it's, you know, this, if you can't make the meeting, then we'll just cancel the meeting. I'm not going to go into a meeting like with another company without the client themselves. Like, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and he just, you know, he said, well, yeah, but it really should be fine. It should be simple. Like, you know, they're, they're really good guys or whatever. So the meeting happens and like, you know, so I'm talking to these other developers and I go, uh, your API doesn't support whatever functionality. And they go, oh yeah, no, it's not supposed to. It's like, you know, we, we can't do that. It's, you know, that would be too hard. We can't do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it was like, I wasn't going to fight for it. So I go back to the client saying, yeah, they can't do it. And he's like, what do you mean? Did you tell them this? Did you tell them this? I was like, this is why we need you in that meeting, right? It's, I'm not going to tell you, you know, it was just, it was tough. But it, the, my biggest thing was, it was a waste of time. It is a waste of time when your client calls you to discuss feedback, right? You just say, okay, here's the first build. Let me know what you think. And then we'll, we'll make these changes and put this thing live. And they call you up and say, I was going to write it all down, but I thought it'd be easier to call it. Just, I thought it'd be easier to just give you a call so I can transcribe it for you. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. So a lot of the times you have to, you make sure you get, we can have a conversation, but I still need you to write all this down, right? I need it down on paper before we agree to these changes, right? Or there's too many rounds of feedback. It's like, we're not playing tennis where I give you a build, you come back with more feedback. I give you another build, you come back with more feedback. I add that feedback, give it back. It's gotta be like, just maybe maybe one or two iterations, right? Bugs are, bugs are different. New features and new functionality is completely different. But it's, my biggest pet peeve is wasting time. And as a developer, when you're doing client work, you have to assert yourself. You have to make sure that they understand that if a, somebody comes up to you with a sport issue saying, uh, Jerry says it doesn't work on his phone. You know, it's like, okay, like, you know, here's what I need from you. And he's like, oh, can you just give Jerry a call? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not calling Jerry. I need to know what kind of phone he's on, like at least Android or iPhone. That would be useful to know. Like what kind of phone is he on? What actually is the issue he's having? You know, like I need, give me some screenshots. You need to make sure that somebody does all the detective work so you don't. You have to protect your time as a developer. Once you put that quote out there, everything starts to get coming away from you. And at that point, you might, you might want to say, let's switch to a time and material model. This is taking too much time. Anyway, I just thought I would share that with you guys. I, it's something that I, that I deal with a lot. And, I, and I, know, I, I know I'm not alone, right? I know that it has to be with a lot of you guys out there. I want to know for those of you guys out there who do client work, do fixed price client work, how do you deal with that kind of issue? Because for me, over the years, it's kind of been this thicker skin that I've grown where I've gotten a lot better at having those difficult conversations. Probably not as good as I should be, but I've gotten a lot better at it. And, um, and I wanted to share that with some of you guys who are just getting started because it's a new skill set, man. It's, it's, not, it's easy just to, to say yes to everything, which I've kind of, I kind of I have in the past. I might do a little bit too much now, but uh, it's, it's, you know, being assertive as a developer is really, really important. Anyway, this is my thoughts for today. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please like, subscribe. Go ahead. We'd love to have you. Uh, and that's it for today. I'll talk to you again next time.